Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Uh, the topic for this video is looking at the if statement within the using Excel VBA. So we're going to go through a few examples obviously of how to use the if statement and a couple of variations of using it. So obviously working with multiple uh, pieces of criteria. Um, let's say without further introduction we'll just jump straight in. So what we need to do is, as you'll probably be familiar with in all our previous videos uh, in this VBA series, if you aren't, obviously you can go check them out in the playlist that is linked in the description for this video. Else, as a quick reference, all we're going to do is obviously code in this module. So to do that, we just need to go insert and do module, and then we can start typing in our subroutine. So the first thing we're going to do is a very simple if statement. So we just need to do a sub, obviously to store this as a subroutine, and we're going to call this, um, let's call this if, state uh, or go if example okay so in order to work with if statements we're basically going to use obviously variables and obviously then pass those through the if statement or if function uh, to obviously determine what course of action we're going to take based on that variable or that comparison that we've performed so the first thing we're going to do is create another uh, create an initial variable called number one. So this is where we're going to store a number and then we can use or do some comparisons against this number uh, with our if statement. So the first thing we're going to do, and again, this is just for best practice. You don't need to set variables as we've discussed previously, but we're just going to stick with best practices and define our value um, as our desired uh, integer value. So we're going to do dim number one as uh, integer. And then we can now move into our if statement. Uh, oh no, sorry, before we do that, we've obviously got to define what this value is. So we're going to do number one equals uh, 10. So very simple there, it's just a, a straightforward number. So the first thing we want to do is, with our is statement, as, as we'll be doing in our examples, is taking this number one and just passing it through a few pieces of criteria. So the first thing we're going to do is see or test if the number we've got, or number one, which is the value of 10, we're going to see if that value is greater than five. So the first thing we need to do is go if number one, because that's our variable, is greater than, so if you're not familiar with these symbols, I'll go over them as we go through. So the greater than symbol is what I'll just use there, and to get that on the keyboard, you do hold down the shift button, and you hit the full stop button on your keyboard. Uh, so greater than is, you can see they've got the larger side on the left and the smaller on the right, so greater than. If you wanted to do less than, it's just the opposite of that. So you do shift and the comma button. So you can see we've got the less than icon there. So sort of digressed a bit there. I'm going to go into these again in a minute, but there you go. Just covered it off just so before you got stumped with what those symbols are. So we want to test to see if our number is greater than five. So if we go is if number one is greater than five, then and now we can move into what logic we want to happen if this is true. I'm just going to do an extra space. You don't need to, um, a new line, shall I say. You don't need to, but I hope this is probably makes it a bit clearer on the screen for your viewing. And I'm just going to tab in just so we can keep our code clear again. So if number one is greater than five, we want to present a message box uh, that says um, number greater than five. So simple as that. If our message box, or if if our if number one is greater than five, then we want to display a message box that says number greater than five. I'm just going to actually tuck this in a bit more because it does look a bit better actually. And that is the only uh, logic or criteria we're going to apply at this moment. So therefore, we now just need to end our if statement. So we just do end if. So that is the entire if statement we need to test if our value is greater than five. If we now run this, so we can either do that by our apply button or hitting F5, you can see we get a pop-up that comes up and says number greater than five. So it's all worked as we completely intended. If, however, we go OK, if we wanted to test this and we changed our number to four, so obviously a number that is less than five, you can see when we now run the code, nothing is happening because we haven't defined anything we want to happen. So what's happening at the moment is it's going into our code, it says if number one is greater than five, well, four is not greater than five, so all it's then going to do is exit this if function and end. So there's actually no criteria to happen. In order to do that, we now need to enter um, another uh, piece to our if uh, function. So the first and most basic option for us to do is we can say else, so simply type the word else, 
new line. And you can see as with all our VBA code, you can tell that you're, you'll type the word correctly when the reformatting happens like this and you can see it's actually turned the color blue as well. So first part, if number one is greater than five, then obviously we want to display a message box of number greater than five. So here we can say, okay, well, if that's not the case and number one is actually less than five, we just now want to show a message box saying uh, number less than five. So we can see we've now covered off both options. So if it's greater than five, we're going to get the message saying number is greater than five. If it's less than five, then we're going to get the message box that says, message box that says it's less than five. So let's run this code now and just check that's all working. So yet we can now see that it says number is less than five because the number is four. If we just change our number to the number six and run this again, you can see it's given us the correct one again of number is greater than five. So both of those scenarios are working. The only problem we now have with this code is if we were to put the same number. So if we were to change number one to number five, and obviously number five is equal to obviously the number five we're comparing against, and if we were to run this, you can see that we've actually got uh, something that's not quite right. So you can see at the moment, because they're actually the same, our logic is saying if number one is greater than five, obviously say number greater than five, and else, so it's going to just disregard what the number is, it's just automatically going to put less than five if it's not greater than five. So our logic is working in some respects, but obviously it's not technically correct. We actually need to put some, or make a change to this so that we can actually say, okay, well, it's, we wanted to say the number is the same, so the number is five. In order to do that, we can do okay. So we can go into here and we can now say, so let's go into here and go, okay, so we want to add some other logic. So we can now put into here, else, if. So else if is obviously a bit more detailed to else. So when you work with the else part, so we've got here, and ignore that error just now popped up. Else is there's going to be no logic or anything applied. It's literally going to say if nothing else matches your criteria or none of your other if statements obviously are a match, it's just automatically going to dump or resort to this final line of code here. But if we actually want to say, well, we want to apply some logic, so if it's not greater than five, but it is this, then this is where we use else if. So let's go into a new line here. So else if, and obviously I've got to write it on the same line here, else if number one equals five, then, and now we can add some logic here. So we can put message box um, number is equal to five. So you can see we've now got three scenarios covered and let's just add some spaces. So the first part, and I hope this is um, this is not mumbled together and it is making um, good sense, um, but hopefully if I talk through this now, it starts bringing it together. So the first thing that's going to happen is it's going to perform this if part and say, okay, if your number one is greater than five, then perform this piece of code and obviously ignore everything else. It's going to just jump all over this. It's only going to execute this message box here. So it'll say number is greater than five. If that isn't a match because the number is actually less than five or it's, it's not a number greater than five, so it's not six or above, then what it will do is do this test. It will say else if number one is equal to five, then present a message box that says number is equal to five. If neither of those two pieces of criteria are correct, so it's not greater than five and it's not equal to five, we can quite confidently say, well, actually the number is then going to be less than five. Therefore, all we need to do is spit out this message box that says message box number is less than five. So if we now run this, we can see yeah, number is equal to five. It is indeed. If we were to do a number greater than five, like six, number is greater than five. And if we were to do a number less than, we do four, then we can execute our code and we can see number is less than five. So all our scenarios are now covered off by using that else if statement. With else if, you can have um, as many as you require. Um, obviously, you, you can have maybe one or you can have multiple, depending on the data that you're working with. So you're not limited to just, just one else if, you can have more on here if you wanted. Uh, so as a really random example, uh, let's just go into here and say, um, I was literally copying the code just to be cheaty and be a bit lazy. Else if number one equals, um, equals five, 
then message or oh, n equals three, sorry, then message block number is equal to three. So again, if I was to run this code, um, obviously at the moment number is less than five because we've got four. But if we actually selected the number three and do that, you can see number is equal to three. So again, the logic I've just now applied here by entering in that is not quite correct because we've got obviously this less than five if it is less than five or if it's not three. Uh, but you can just see that you have the flexibility of working with uh, more than just the one else if statement if you require. In addition to working with the symbols that we looked at here with the greater than, we are also able to do greater than or equal to a number. So if I was just to go into a maybe a new stub sub here, so let's go sub um, next if example, uh, random subroutine name, but uh, there is some logic in that. And we're just going to do number one equals to five. If number one is greater than or equal to five, then message box uh, greater than or equal to five, else um, less than five would be our message box, MSG box, like that, and if, so a really quick example of what I've just done here, and we can just remove all of this now. So a new subroutine I've done here, so our number one, or our number is equal to five, and as with our previous example, we use the else if statement to you know, cover off scenarios where the number is actually less than, equal to, or greater than. What we can actually do is tick off that by using a combination of these two symbols. So we've got the greater than here, and also combining it with the equal sign um, so that we can capture everything that is five and above rather than just greater than five. So if I was to run this now, you can see that our message box is going to say greater than or equal to five. And that's because obviously we've now put this additional logic in. If I was to put the number six, you can see that if we were to run this, again, it's still greater than or equal to five. If I was to do the number four and run that, you can see it's going to automatically default to our else, which is just, it's going to be less. So if it's not greater than or equal to five, it must be less than five. Hence, we can just do this simple logic of else. So that's another quick touch on another ability we are able to do with using combining the greater than or less than symbol with the equal sign as well. And if you want to do that, you just need to do that in this order. So the greater than part first, followed by the equal sign together to give you that logic. So I hope you enjoyed that video and I gave you insight into using the if function within Excel VBA. If you did enjoy the video, please do give it a like. It's not only greatly appreciated by myself, but it also does help that all important YouTube algorithm. If it's the first time checking out the channel or you've watched our videos before, please do subscribe to the channel and also make sure you hit that bell notification button. That way you'll be notified of all of our new videos as they come out. And if you have any questions at all, uh, please just drop me a comment below this video and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So thank you once again, and we'll see you in the next video.